start recording. That would be good. Even though we're live on Facebook, I'd like to have the live Zoom recording too. Um, so backing up real quick, you know, Matthew and I were talking on desktop time about social media and how, how we can and should and could use it for our business. And I made the point in that webinar of talking about that there's one very big mistake we're all making. And I, I believe it's fair to say, oh, there are probably very few exceptions to this. And me only recently, as I've been, you know, as I'm constantly studying this stuff very closely and, of course, trying to figure out how to make things work the best that I can for my own business, right? So what that brings up is the, you know, the question of how are we using social media for our business? And like you said, Gina, what we, you know, how, you know, we have these Facebook pages, but they're a bit clunky, hard to use. Um, they recently moved things around and it seems like I'm sure their, their intention is to make it easier. Somehow they seem to inadvertently make it even harder to use all the time. Um, but here's the mistake we made. And I mentioned this in, in the desktop time webinar and I used Hector as the example, you know, Hector built a nice little audience on YouTube and then twice in the last year, they shut him down. I'm sure he had no expectation that this would ever happen. I'm sure he was certain that everything he was doing was completely on the up and up, no violations of their terms of service. Cause in that webinar, a couple of people were commenting saying, Oh, you know, it won't happen in Facebook groups as long as you, you know, you're careful about what you do and what you say. And I'm like, bullshit you know it will you have to almost assume it will happen to you because you'll do something that you would never in a million years think would trigger an issue and yet it will trigger an issue and the bottom yeah, line control is comes along yeah any number of things can go wrong especially when you don't own facebook and therefore mm -hmm. you don't own the audience that you build on facebook facebook owns it right and that's what I want to really bring home today is the fact that we have to build a strategy around bringing that audience home and home, home is where the heart is, but home is where the website is, right? And you're gonna, I'm gonna mention this again later on this morning, that we have to stop thinking of our website as just our website, and we have to start thinking of our website as our community. That's where we build our community. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, all these social media sites are places where we can go connect with people and that's the starting point of building our audience. But eventually we want to bring them home and actually build the audience there, right? If Facebook shuts me down today because they don't like what I'm saying on their live feed in this very webinar, I can still email my list, which has thousands of people on it, and say, guess what? Facebook shut me down, but I'm still here. We're still in contact, right? I haven't lost a thing. I haven't missed a beat. Facebook could decide to make it ridiculously impossible to use their pages that they've given mm -hmm. us supposedly for our business, and it won't slow me down a bit, right? The point is, we use these things, they're tools, but we can't be dependent upon them, right? Because if we're completely dependent upon these places, then they shut us down and we're dead in the water. Not only do they shut down our social channel, they shut down our entire business because we've made social media our entire business model, right? So that's the key is I want, what I'm hoping to really drive home more than anything else today is to encourage you to shift your dependence. Don't depend on social media for where you connect with your audience. Think of that as the first point of contact. The place where you truly build your audience is going to be on your website. You want to build a community out of your website and, and encourage people to come over there. And of course you're running, okay, great, Seth, how do you do that? Well, that's what the rest of the hour today is going to be all about. I've heard it described as a funneling system. You want to funnel the people to your website. That's always your objective, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we've forgotten about that. We've gotten so used to how easy social media makes it for us to connect with people that we've forgotten about that important part of the process, which is we want to, you said it perfectly, Gina, we're talking about creating traffic funnels, right? But in order for this whole process to be effective, we have to build that money site, which is our website, right? And, we, and that's, again, where we have to build the community, right? So your business has to be yours. Your business can't be Facebook's, right? You have to build a list of people who are interested in what you have to offer, and you have to have a way of being in direct contact with them so that even if Facebook shuts you down, it doesn't slow you down. In short, we really have to think of using email as a way to stay in touch with people, right? Oh, bite your tongue. <laughs> Are you going to bring Matthew on and talk about email? <laughs> well, you know, I'm not talking about emailing clients for business. You all well know 
that that's not the way I deal with clients. I deal with clients in Slack. I'm talking about using email as what it was really intended to originally be, which is a means of staying in touch with people, a means of staying in contact with people, a means of sharing my message, sharing my experience, strength, and hope with people so that they might you know, get and stay interested and stay in contact with me, right? I think just about every one of you here on my list that I send out mm -hmm. an email to every Sunday, right? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that kind of email. And if you pay attention, not just to what I'm sending you, but if you pay attention to the format, you know, a lot of us, because we were taught this originally to do this, uh, using tools like Constant Contact and MailChimp and whatnot, you know, a lot of us send these professional looking newsletters with pretty banner images and a, and a sidebar that's got links mm -hmm. you can click on to go read more articles. And that's not what I'm talking about. That's not, that's not communicating with people. If you look at the format of my emails, it is written exactly the way I would write an email from me to you to share something with you about an experience I've had. And that is the exact format of my email. Every week I share my experience with you, something I've learned over the past week. And it is a, a simple plain text email format. It's broken up into short chunks intentionally. The idea is to guide you through something and to lead you from one point to the next, right? There's a very specific thought process behind how those emails are structured, right? Be the other thing is if I send you a big wall of text, you're going to be like, I'm never going to read this. It's way too much. But mm -hmm. short, bite-sized chunks to read. You read a chunk and you go on to the next chunk and so on, right? So, and I've learned this. I didn't read anything that taught me how to do this. I've learned this by watching other marketers and how they structure their emails. And I've actually studied it closely. I've studied their word structure. I've studied what they do, how they put certain keywords in certain places to get me to want to read on, right? The idea is, and it sounds like we're being manipulative, it's really not. It's really tr learning how to structure your writing in such a way that it encourages people to want to read on. Be and, and the reason I'm doing that is not because I'm trying to manipulate people, but because I really believe I have a message of value and I want to make sure people read it. And I also understand that most people won't, most people won't care. And a lot of people are going to opt out. You know, every week when I send the email out, usually one or two people opt out, but I have 15 or 20 that are opting in every single week, right? And that's the key. I'm not interested in building an email list of 50,000 people unless those 50,000 people are diehard fans who can't, you can't help but eat up every word of what I put out there. That's what I want on my list. I'd rather have a list of 2,000 people who love every word I write than a list of 50,000 people who only moderately give a crap, right? <laughs> so it's really going to be about the email, but in order to do that, we really need to think about how to build our website. And one of the main points in this that I mentioned really in the title, right, consolidating several items in your tech stack is, and this goes to one of the questions that uh, it was uh, Peter, who again is not here with us, but he asked this when he registered, um, you know, how it sort of compare Kajabi to WordPress. Well, there's a reason I moved from WordPress to Kajabi, right? And one of those reasons is Kajabi provides me with one entire platform that pretty much does it all. And it's not a situation where it does things all half-assed. It does all of it and it does it really well because it's all tied into having one platform from which to run my entire business and build my community, right? And that's what I mean that I want to stress so hard this morning that this goes, it's not just a website anymore. We have to stop thinking of our website as just a website. And what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, sort of pointing to there is I think a lot of us think our website is just a place to put up a page that describes our services. Maybe we've got a blog and maybe we've got a contact page. We have to, our website has to become our living, breathing community, right? <clears throat> and that means we have to get very involved with it. And it should be one of, if not the first thing you log into every single day. And one of the things I love about Kajabi, and one of the reasons I love logging into it every single day, is when I log into Kajabi, the first thing it shows me when I log into the back end is my sales over the last 30 days. And little by little, I've been moving all my processes off of WooCommerce and over to Kajabi to process all my payments for everything I offer and sell. And, and they've just recently added a beautiful analytics area too, where I can get really detailed and see how many people went to which page and how much time they spent. And that's really good information. But the one metric I really care about is that th sales over the last 30 days. And do you know why? Because keeping it very simple, all I really need to know is whether or not that number is increasing or decreasing, right? If that number is 
not increasing, let's put it that way, even if it's holding flat, <clears throat> if it's holding flat, it's gonna start decreasing unless I bring in some more sales. Now, granted, I have a lot of subscription-based stuff so that, that will cycle. But the point is, every morning when I look at that, if I see that that number has gone down, it sort of reminds me, and this goes back to a process I have that I've taught in 97 and up, where we have our whole goal template that we use, where we track what's my goal this month versus what I've actually gotten in. And the point is, I look at that number, and if I see that it's going down or not going where I want it to, my first focus becomes, what can I do to increase that number? right? What can I do to bring in more sales today? Which means that it's keeping me focused really on growing my business. And from there, I become infinitely more aware throughout my day of making sure that I'm not doing something that's a waste of my time, right? It's so easy for us to get sucked in, speaking of Facebook, to things that are a complete waste of our time, right? And I find myself more and more because of that awareness, and again, I wanna stress that awareness is triggered by the fact that the first thing I look at every day is my sales over the last 30 days, which Kajabi provides me easily, is I, I, I become so aware then when I'm, and I've stopped myself even this week, I've stopped myself a number of times because I was about to engage in a conversation that I just quickly stopped myself and said, wait a minute, yeah, I could go in here and I could probably even add some value for people and answer a question, but is this really going to help me further my goals? And I'm not talking about the true value added stuff where somebody's got a legit QuickBooks question that I can answer. Of course, that stuff I'll do all day long. That adds value for me and others, right? Because it reminds people that I might know something about what I'm talking about. Um, and it also helps them get the answers they're looking for. I'm talking about the useless argumentative conversations that constantly go on on Facebook where I find myself getting reactive and wanting to go in and prove a point and then I stop and realize that proving that point is worthless it's worthless to me and it's worthless to anybody else because I'm not going to convince anybody of anything in that moment in all likelihood and even if I do it still doesn't really help matters much and so, you're not a troll and I'm not a troll so the point is I, I it helps me stay very focused on constantly moving towards my goals and thinking about is this or is this not going to help me move closer to where I want to be, right? And that becomes a really clear and easy barometer to use for keeping my trajectory on target, right? So next question that you're wondering, because I've stressed a lot about writing, that, oh, I'm not a writer. I'm not a good writer. Don't worry about that. Writing like anything else, you're going to get better with practice, okay? The point is just to do it. And the other point is don't worry about writing the most amazing sales copy. Like I said, this isn't about writing sales copy. I don't write sales copy in the emails I send out. I said it earlier. I share my experience. Every Saturday morning, I sit down with a fresh cup of coffee and I think about the past week. And I think about what experiences did I have? Which, what interactions did I have that I really learned something from? And then I try and write something for you that I share with you that will hopefully help you learn something, you know, so I can pass along what I'm learning each and every week. That's not a sales message. That's simply me sharing my experience and most importantly, sharing from the heart. That's the key. I guarantee you that if you write something and you share from the heart genuinely and authentically, you won't have to worry about whether or not you're a good writer. It will resonate with people and your writing will get better and better and more refined. And of course, there's an infinite number of resources out there that will help you get better at writing. If you really want to learn how to write sales copy, go get Ray Edwards' book, How to Write Copy That Sells. Get it. It's good. It will also teach you how to write things kind of in bullet point form that will help you create those little chunks that you can string together in paragraph form afterwards, right? So get that book. Writing, uh, the original book was Writing Riches. Now it's called How to Write Copy That Sells. I look forward to your email on Sunday. <laughs> you, you know I read them all. I answer you sometimes. I'm like, ah, I'm like, I me, do enjoy them. It makes me so happy to hear that. And, and, and the reason I've continued to do it is because I get so many people who do reply and say that exact thing that they look forward to. And, and that was my whole goal when I started really, you know, um, reformatting the way I do these emails and the frequency. A lot of people just do an email a month. Guess what? A month later, I've forgotten about you. I don't know who you are a month later. You know, I'm sort of kidding for the sake of emphasis. Of course, each and every one of you I know well. But my point is, um, once a month is not often enough, right? Imagine this. You're trying to build a relationship with somebody. If you were going to start dating somebody, would you just go on one date a month? <laughs> 
right? <laughs> so it's, it's not that different here, right? We're trying to build relationships with people. Once a month is not often enough to contact somebody. We need to do it weekly. What I like about them is to pay attention to those small interactions that you have through your week with it could be the checkout person on somewhere or it could be bumping into an old friend in the coffee shop, but it's these little interactions that most of us do not, we're so busy rushing to our next mm -hmm. appointment or next where we ever got to go that you don't slow down and really think about. And I've started to do that. I start rethinking, you know, am I thinking about, you know, the old friend that I just bumped into or not? So, mm -hmm how that helps me bring up some memories of our times together. So it's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It, it really comes down to being in the moment and being present, which means just paying attention to what's going on around me right now. So many times when we're going through the motions of our day, our minds are millions of miles and maybe many years away from this moment, right? We're either thinking about something way into the future that hasn't happened yet and may never happen, or we're thinking about something in the past that's already done and gone, right? So I think, it, and I think when you, when you get sort of practiced at really paying attention to what's going on in the moment, um, I think life is more enjoyable on every level, actually, because now I'm engaged in whatever it is that I'm doing right now. Even standing online at the grocery store, I sometimes, and I'm sure you've all experienced this, sometimes we get annoyed right? We're online at the grocery store and somebody, heaven forbid, in 2019 whips out a check to pay for their groceries with a check. And my first reaction is I want to strangle them, you know, and then sometimes I'll give them a pass in my mind because they're maybe a little older. So I say, okay, they get a pass because they're, I don't expect them to, you know, trust and understand the efficiency in the, anyway. Um, so certain people in my mind get a pass, but anyway, and then sometimes I, I remember to stop in those moments and say, you know what? Instead of getting annoyed with people while I'm standing in line at the grocery store, how about remembering that today I get to stand in line at the grocery store? Because there was a time in my life when I couldn't afford to stand in line at the grocery store because I couldn't afford to pay for those groceries that I'm getting to pay for right now. And it completely shifts the perspective. And that's what I've learned over and over and over again and more and more as time has gone on. And that is so critically important to me to putting things into perspective and remembering where I'm at and why I'm there and most importantly, how I got there, right? So let's talk about the actual web design part because this has been a lot of philosophy, which is great. But in case, for example, you're wondering how to get on that list in case there's any among us here who aren't actually on there already, let me sh see, Greg's not here. You know, I have to remember to share my screen on my own. Um, if you wanted to, opt in to get that weekly email that we're talking about, then you go right here. Everything is on new.nerdenterprises.com, right? Easy to remember, you know my website, nerdenterprises.com, just put new in front of it and you're there. And if you scroll down on this home page, right here, you'll see where it says, get updates. It couldn't be simpler, right? It doesn't have to be a whole complicated thing like, get my free blah, blah, blah. It's just get updates. Really simple, right? Now, of course, the reason for getting updates is, is provided here, right? I'm going to shorten your learning curve so you can stay focused on your business, right? That sounds interesting. It sounds exciting, I think. It sound, it's not too specific, right? And then I clarified a little bit further that this could be for business owners or accountants, right? That's kind of just how my list grew and evolved. And I, I thought about trying to split it up and I said, no, nah, you know what? The message is the same because in the end, whether you're an accountant or bookkeeper or some other business owner, we're all just business owners, right? And so that's, I know that's very broad and I'm the first one to say, if you target everyone, you may as well target no one. But this is just building a list of, of a very broad list of people. And I'm going to talk in a few minutes about how you can then create other forms in Kajabi to narrow things down based on what specifically people might be interested in. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. Okay, checking in on the Facebook feed real quick. Mariette says, hola, friends. Yes, I love talking about goals. Andrea says, hi, everyone. And uh, Ken Bostrom has joined us. And Gina's also watching us live on Facebook, as well as here in the panel. <laughs> I'm like um, that I can do two things at once. Imagine. That's crazy <laughs> talk. 
And Larry's joined us too. Larry. I see that. I was just going to say, I see Larry there as well. Beautiful. Um, okay. So, uh, again, I want to come back, you know, to what I already said, just to quickly recap and then move forward and actually teach something here today that I think will be really useful. Um, again, the trick is to stop thinking of your website as just a website and start thinking of it as a way of building the community. And what you're looking at on my website is that first portal, that first gateway to how I build my community is I invite you to come onto my list so I can talk to you once a week on Sundays, right? And again, a lot of the way I do this stuff is by learning from what other marketers do. And, you know, uh, one of the top marketers that I follow for this purpose especially is Chris Brogan, right? If you don't know who Chris Brogan is, just Google him. I've mentioned him. I, I'm always mentioning him a lot because I've learned a lot from him. But this is Chris Brogan. He's written a number of books, and, and he's just an all-around great guy. He's one of these guys that has gotten huge in social media, but he hasn't, like his ego hasn't run away with it. You know, he's authentic. He's real. I had the opportunity last year. I paid him for some coaching one-on-one, -on -one, and I worked with him. And it was one of these things where I had gotten on his email list a long time ago, and he's one of those. Linda, just like you just said to me, how you look forward to getting my emails, I look forward to getting his emails. And guess what time his emails show up at my inbox? Pacific time, they show up at 1 a.m. Guess what time my emails show up in your inbox? Uh, 1 a.m. Pacific. One. <laughs> right? I schedule them that way. And the idea is I want you to, and I'm considering the fact that some people are on the East Coast and other time zones. So, Linda, for you, that's going to show up at 4 a.m. If you ever notice the timestamp. Right? The idea is I want it to be there waiting for you when you wake up on Sunday morning. I want my email to be the thing you read over your Sunday morning cup of coffee that I've written over my Saturday morning cup of coffee. And that's what I do too. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> yep. There's a very clear visual image that I get of myself when I'm writing them and of you when you're reading them. And I think that's important. You really want to visualize the person you're talking to when you're writing this. And you really want to write this stuff as though you're writing it to an individual, not to a group. And if you write it with that kind of thought process, then it will come across that way and it will feel personal and intimate to the person you're writing to. And that's exactly what it's intended to be. And I've learned that from Chris. Chris writes his emails in the exact format. I learned my format from watching how he writes his. Plain text, no banners, no sexy images. I will throw in a screenshot. I've been trying to make a point of throwing in screenshots just for fun, really, but also to illustrate something important and valuable. So I've been trying to make it a point lately that's been like a new thing I've been doing is trying to make a point of including a screenshot somewhere in every email that I send out, okay? So the trick is to stop thinking of your website as a website and start thinking of it as a community that you're going to build. And one of the things I love about Kajabi is that they give you the platform to build your entire business. Again, they're focused on sales performance. The new analytics area that they offer is powerful. But like I said, there's one metric that moves me forward every morning when I first log in, log in and that's that 30-day that rolling sales figure that it shows me. And when I see that it's averaging down, I'm triggered psychologically it's time to get busy I got to do something creative to first and foremost always offer value to somebody right if I'm not offering real value nobody's gonna opt in or they're all gonna opt out shortly after they've opted in so that really has to be the cornerstone of all of what we're building here is that we have to always be offering real value now going back to the question of WordPress versus Kajabi to do what I'm doing here in WordPress which I did do for years I need WordPress, right? There's a lot of costs associated with WordPress. There's a lot of time involved because every time I log into WordPress, when I have one very specific thing to do, I'm almost always slowed down by the fact that I have six plugins that need updates and probably two themes that are installed on the site that also need updates. And now I'm waiting for updates to install and heaven forbid those updates crash my site, which they've often done. And now I'm busy restoring my last backup of my website. And as we talked about in 97 and up this week, next thing I know, because I have WooCommerce subscriptions going, now people's cards are getting charged the second time. Anybody whose cards were hit over the last 24 hours, because when I restore that backup, it no longer thinks that their subscriptions have gone through and they get charged twice. And now I'm getting angry emails and spending time refunding money. I can't believe how much time I've wasted because of WordPress. 
And I'm so glad that I don't have to do that anymore because all of this is seamless with Kajabi. There are no plugins to update. They handle all the IT headaches with respect to running the site. And I have yet to see the site go down once since I've been using it. Not once has this site gone down. Okay. And I trust these guys. I'm, you know, they have a very good community that we have a Facebook page that, you know, that you can get access to the people, even the top people at the company, you know, are engaged and they're involved in the audience and the community and their own community. Right. So to do this process with WordPress, just getting the emails and sending out the updates and having a landing page, like the one you're looking at here to capture the emails, we're talking, it very quickly gets to 25 bucks a month with MailChimp. And then it grows to 50 bucks a month as your list grows, right? Uh, and then you need a good plugin for creating landing pages. I was using something called Mail Munch, and I want to say that's maybe 10 bucks a month, right? So we're already spending like 35 bucks a month at the core just to get this process done. With Kajabi, it's all in. It's included, okay? Kajabi, it's just, it's just, it's part of what you pay for when you pay for Kajabi. And there's a, you're wondering what the pricing is. I usually wait till the end, but I'll spoil it now. The, the basic package for Kajabi is something like 130 a month. And then I pay, I have their 199 a month package because it includes more products and a few more little bells and whistles. So 200 a month may sound like a lot of money, but when you consider what you're already saving 35 bucks a month to, to, to implement a process like this, it's, you start to make that money back pretty quickly, not to mention the time you recapture because you're not constantly running updates like you have to do every time you go to do something in WordPress, right? So let's go into Kajabi's backend and build a landing page. All right, notice I have my bookmarks really organized, so I have a whole Kajabi thing, All right? And this takes this one takes me right to the back end. Okay, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not ashamed to show it. This is, you know, this is the metrics I'm talking about that you see as soon as you log in. We're gonna go to the website building part of it. Seth, can you build a, a, a website on the back end and then just move your domain over? Or do you have to create a new domain? So what I did, there's, there's, it's a good question. There's a number of ways to approach that. What I did was I created a subdomain called new.nerdenterprises.com. And so that way, the, Kajabi, the whole Kajabi side of things is built on this subdomain. And if you go to just nerdenterprises.com, I've still got my old site here, but notice everything is kind of redirecting you over it. Like if I click on this logo or click anything here, it's going to take me over to the new site. So on the original site, I'm driving traffic right over to the new one. And the, one of the main reasons I did this specifically, and this may or may not apply to all of you, is that I have a lot of content on here which is generating good SEO for me, and I didn't wanna just wipe that. All that content is still on this site, right? If I link to an old blog post, that's all still here. I've just taken it out of the navigation because I don't want to drive traffic there specifically. I want people to start going over to the new site. So this is how I'm avoiding killing my SEO and at the same time able to build a new platform and let it grow. And eventually, as I feel like my SEO has been sort of replaced with what I'm doing over here on the new site, then I will start to phase it out. And then eventually, this site will become just all one Thing at nerdenterprises.com. But can you do it the other way though and just build You can site? start from scratch and just absolutely. You can just wipe your whole site and start building your site on Kajabi right away. Absolutely. Well, I'm just wondering about moving it over. You know, um, There's no way to move content. You have no, to just recreate oh, it. Okay, not what I meant. What I mean is that you that there's a like Squarespace gives you lets you build your whole site on a uh, and then when it's done, you just oh yes, it. yes. When you first sign up for Kajabi, you're going to have some something dot dot com is going to okay. be your domain, and that's where I'm sorry. Now I understand the question. Okay. Um, I'm a little slow sometimes, oh, well, um, okay. but yeah. So you'll build it on Kajabi's domain, and then at some point when you're ready, they have a whole process. It's funny they just updated it. It used to be through Cloudflare. But within like the last couple of weeks, they changed it. And I don't know exactly how this works because I set all mine up through Cloudflare. But apparently you don't need Cloudflare anymore with Kajabi. There's just a process they have so that when you're ready, Alexa, to just say, hey, I want to make this my actual permanent website at my domain, they give you a way. And their documentation is amazing, by the way. When you go in here, and I'm just going to duplicate the tab and go into the settings area. 
this is how you would do it. You go here to custom domain and they walk you through step by step exactly how to get your domain set up with your Kajabi site. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. They, they, they're, these guys are so good at this. You know, we were just talking about how unintuitive Facebook can be when it comes to just learning how to navigate their pages. This is the polar opposite. It is so extremely intuitive. When you, if you type something into the search here, it will often take you to that feature that you're looking for, that you were searching for help on, and or the, the documentation that will teach you how to use that feature. Their search is amazing. So like when I wanted to learn how do they work with affiliates, first of all, at this point, and this keeps evolving, that's the other thing I love. One thing that makes me love an app is when it's very clear that there is a team of developers actively updating and improving things. Mm -hmm. And here with Kajabi, that is extremely prevalent. Right. So up over here now, before I even type a search, I remember when I first started using Kajabi, I wanted to find out if there was even any kind of a way to create an affiliate program for people. And so I, I typed affiliates and it's right. It, it, you know, it took me right there here. I don't even have to type a search. As soon as I click into the search, it gives me kind of the top level things that I'm most likely going to be looking for help with. And there it is affiliates. And if I click on this, it's going to walk me through. Actually, it takes me right into the affiliate part of my website. Right. And so I played with this a little bit. Again, they have amazing documentation. This was so easy to set up and implement. And now I can invite any one of you to sign up to be an affiliate of mine using this link. Excuse me. And then once you sign up, you'll be given a list of links for each product that I've set up a program for. So that if you give out that URL to my Bulletproof Bookkeeping course, you'll get credit for having sent the person who signed up. And I'll pay out, I think it's a 10% commission is what I'm paying out. On, on that, you know, on that product, right? And I've set it up for other products as well. So they make it really, really easy to do this stuff. Okay. Any other questions? No, but boy, that's a lot different than WordPress. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so right. so well, when, you, when you are building a page, how, like WordPress just, I'm like, this is way over my head. How I'm glad you asked. Let's do that because that's, that's, that's the next thing I really wanted to do. Right. And, and, you know, and then I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about the emails, but I want to show you how easy it is to build a page in here. So I went from the main control panel. I just clicked here where it says website and it expands this menu. Here's that new analytics area I was referring to, which is amazing. The next thing, first of all, when I click on website, it takes me to this design tab here on the left and here are the basic pages. I can choose to use this home page and build it there, which I did initially, and then I changed it. And I, in the settings, you decide whether you use this home page as your home page or a custom landing page that you've built, right? So ultimately, what I did was I changed the settings, and I'll show you where that is. If I go into settings and site details, and it tells you control the info home page and SEO settings. So if I go into site details, for the home page, I changed it here to say show a landing page, and then I told it which landing page to use. The landing page that I created is called welcome to new.nerdenterprises.com, right? But you could also just say, um, actually, I guess they got rid of the home page thing. I had read that they were going to. I can show the theme index. I can show a landing page, which is, or I can show the library, which would be the, um, the list of courses that somebody's got access to. Users will be prompted to sign in. So that means nobody will see anything on your website until they've signed in. So I, I think that's actually not a good idea. Or you could take them right to the store. You can say, you know what, when somebody comes to my website, the first thing I want them to see is the store, which has all the courses and products that I might be offering for sale, right? All right, so let's go back to the website. So in my case, what I did was I just went straight to the page builder. And so here's the page I built. It sorts them in the, or, in the order of when you've, re, when you've accessed the page to like work on it. So, but you can use the search. So if I type welcome and hit enter, I can quickly pull up. As the list of pages grows, this makes it really easy to find the page that I'm looking for that I want to edit. So I could go into this and kind of show you the back end, but I'd rather actually build a whole new page with you and show you how this works. So let's do that. Guess where I'm gonna click to create a new page? Add a page. <laughs> new page. Okay, now when you go to create a new page, they give you different templates to work with. Kind of like in WordPress where you pick a theme. 
but this one is page by page. I'm going to stick with this one because this is the one I've been using across the board. Obviously, consistency is important. You want to make sure that when somebody's browsing your site, they don't feel like they've been taken somewhere else. So my suggestion is once you've picked a theme for a page, for the most part, you want to stick with that theme. I might do a different theme for like a page that's meant strictly to be a landing page to capture emails, right? Like this one to my right, the one here called Marie. I might use this just for a quick email capture page, right? But for the most part, I want to stick with whichever theme I've chosen. So I click on it. It gives me kind of a preview and an explanation. And I'm going to click Get Started. Okay, so we're going to call this Zoom In with Seth. And this actually is a page that I've been wanting to set up on my website. I've had it on my to-do list for days. So we're going to get to at least see how to start it. And the, the purpose of this page is going to be that if somebody clicks on one of my Zoom in registration links after the webinar has happened, Zoom gives you a place where you can put the URL in for where you want those people to go. Because otherwise they're going to go to a, regist a dead registration page for a webinar that's already happened, right? So Zoom gives you a place to put a URL. So I'm going to create this page so I can provide that page's URL in the Zoom so that from now on, once this page is done, anytime somebody uh, clicks on an old registration link for one of my Friday Zooms, they're going to get taken to this page that I'm about to start building, which ultimately is going to explain to them, it's, and I'm going to put something you know, funny in the header that says, oh, you clicked on a dead registration you know, for something that's already happened. And then we're going to go from there and say, here's where you can access the old Zooms. That's basically the purpose, is to give somebody uh, you know, a good experience, maybe a fun or funny experience that ultimately says, hey, you clicked on a dead link, but here's what you're probably looking for, right? So that's the purpose of this page. And obviously, it's important to have that purpose in mind when you're building these pages, right? Really important to know what's the end result of this meant to be. Always, always work backwards, right? So it takes a minute, I guess, to kind of install this. But now this is the kicker. This is how easy this is. On the right, you see a preview of exactly what the page looks like. And you can click anything. So hero section, they just give you kind of the filler text. All you have to do is go in and replace it. Now I could browse the left margin here into the sections and the settings, but it doesn't, it's even easier than that. If I want to change what this says here, watch what happens when I hover my mouse, it gives me that dotted blue line in the edit button to make it clear. I can simply click to edit this. And when I do notice what happens on my left is it takes me to the exact part on the left margin where I edit that piece of the page. So I'm going to say zoom in with Seth, David and friends. And it updates as I type. And then we have some follow up text, right? So here's where I put the kind of funny part. So you clicked a dead registration link. Yeah, it landed here. All right, and I'll probably add to that, but I want to move through this a little quickly because we're short on time and I want to make sure you see kind of the full context of how to do all this. As I scroll down, now what I'm really editing here is the dialogue of what's called the hero section. The hero section is this whole top part of the page, right? Now the default of this, as you can see, is it's kind of big and that's kind of a style thing, but I can go down here and I'm scrolling all the way down to the bottom. What I'm doing is I'm saving you the time that I've spent figuring out where all these things are. And you'll, you'll find spacing. It says large. I can make it extra small. And I prefer this. I want it to be clear that there's something below this, something more for somebody to look at. You know, and most people will scroll because they understand that. But I, I like doing this. And of course, you can choose anything in between, right? But as you can see, as I make these updates in the left-hand margin, it renders them on the right and shows me exactly what this is going to look like. So it really couldn't be easier to edit this. Now. The call to action, right, uh, for this purpose might be something like register for this Friday's Zoom, right? I want to put something here that's going to encourage people to register for the next Zoom. So when I click on the button, it has the text that's inside the button right here, the CTA or call to action text. And I can change this to anything I want. I can say, um, actually, I'll take people over to the events page, which is where I have the calendar with all the upcoming Zooms, right? check upcoming zooms okay the button text updates then i have to tell it what url to go to 
let's see if it's, I think it's among the landing page. I have my events page. Notice how easy I can just type the first three letters and it pulls up the page because that's the page that's already on my site that I want to take them to. I created a landing page called events, which just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about from the home page of my website, if you click on events, that's what this page is, right? And all I've done here is I've embedded the Airtable tables that have all the upcoming Zooms. And this is a recent update. I added in these nice big cards that are visual so that people can just click and say, oh, I want to check out uh, cash flows, refunds, and credit memos. And there's your registration link, right? And then I, I, I've left in further down the original calendar where you can just kind of browse bit by the calendar exactly what's going on. So that's the page I'm essentially linking to over here, right? It was a landing page that I already created called events. Now the question is, do you want this to open up in a new window so they don't lose their place? Sure, I like to do that. Okay, the call to action style, don't know what this does, click on it and find out. Notice the button from solid to outline. I prefer the solid. The size, you want small, medium, or large, right? Tall, grande, or venti? So much okay. easier than WordPress. Isn't it? It's ridiculous, <laughs> right? The button color. I don't like blue. I want something that really stands out and grabs somebody's attention, so I'm gonna make it red. And of course, you can go into a custom color palette if you have something specific, which by the way, if you're really into you know, designing the color aspect of your website and you really wanna be consistent with your own branding, you can get the hex codes for your brand's colors and just paste that in here and make the button very specifically whatever color sort of conforms somehow with your branding, right? I wanna show you something else really important. <clears throat> um, when you're building a page like this, and I'll show you an example of a page just like this on my site. If we go to, let's go to the main page actually. And then if I click here, so this is really this same layout, right? That I've set up on this very page. And I have these three images here that replace these little gear icons that they put in, right? So the question is how to do this. The key is the images have to be the exact same dimension so everything lines up properly. And remember a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at some maps, I talked to you all about Snagit. So I wanna show you how to do this. I wanna walk you through this. Because this is the one part that gets off of Kajabi for a minute. But if you know how to do what I'm about to show you, then I believe with what I've shown you so far plus this, you'll have everything you need to start building a website in Kajabi. And obviously you all know how to reach me for additional you know, consult and help if you need it. Um, and by the way, I'm gonna give you my Kajabi partner link in case you haven't already set up an account with them um, and wanna try it, right? You'll get a free trial with them. So over here, if I click edit, now, now for the Zooms, this is the, remember, this is the page where people come to when they clicked on a, a registration link for a Zoom that's already happened. You know, I wanna think in terms of what three things might I invite them to do now that they're here other than check upcoming Zooms, I might do another one here that actually says check upcoming Zooms with a link to the same place. But then I might wanna, um, uh, I, I definitely also wanna take them to where the old Zooms are, right? So let's start there. If I click on this, notice the whole section is kind of sectioned off, right? And so I'm looking, if I click here where it says add a title, it takes me to that specific part in the left margin. And I could say find uh, previous, I don't like the word old. And keep that in mind. I don't like the word old. There's a psychology to this, right? Old makes it sound uninteresting. It's old. It's dated, right? Previous, I think, sounds better, right? I pay very careful attention to how I word things. And I try to put myself in the mind of the person who's on this page and what's going to motivate them to take action, right? One of my goals is I want them staying on my website. I want them to hang out in my community. And the only way to do that is to make it inviting for them to do that. If I throw a word like old up there, that's not as inviting, I don't think, as saying previous. Or how about this? Who can guess what I'm gonna replace previous with? Gold star. How about recent? New and improved. New and improved is great. Recent. Find recent zooms here. Notice it's updating. Now the next thing is we wanna get this image in there. 
right? And so when I click specifically on uh, the image part, it takes me there. First of all, the option is checked off to show the image. I wanna select the image, but notice here, this is really important, selected dimensions 800 by 400. So let's go get an image and we're gonna make it 800 by 400 so that we know it'll fit perfectly. Pexels.com. Okay, Pexels, these photos are free for you to use. You do not have to worry about licensing, royalties, or any of that. That's the whole point of the site is they give you free to use. I'm gonna actually sign in real quick. Because this way I, I'm sure it tracks like what pictures I've downloaded and makes it easier for me to find them later. So let's just search for office. I just want something that, you know, gives me the feeling of being in a, a nice cool office like this one looks really cool and I do by the way normally take my time and choose my images very intentionally and carefully again I'm creating the experience that somebody coming to my site is going to have one of the reasons I chose this picture is there was something about this woman in this picture that made me think this is like my ideal client she's got the tattoo on her forearm she just looks really cool she's in a professional setting it just it gave me this feeling of somebody I'd want to work with as a client right and so I just loved it. I found it very warm. This gave me an image. Course is like I'm just hanging out, drinking my coffee, and it's time to learn, right? So all these pictures are chosen very carefully. I want to stress that. So I'm going to click free download here in Pexels. Uh, I encourage you to take them up on thanking the uh, creators of the photos. That's because they're giving it for free. The least you can do is thank them on Twitter, maybe throw a few bucks their way if you're really inclined to. Um, so I'm going to click here to show this in the folder and we're going to right click here and we're going to open with Snagit. Now I need this to be, hang on, let's wait for it to load. I need it to be 800 by 400. Okay. I can close this for now. I'll come back and thank them later. Back to Snagit. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the smallest dimension that I need, 400. Maybe I get lucky right? I didn't. So I'm going to make this 800. And actually, I didn't like the way, there it is, Snagit is kind of bouncing back and forth on me. So I went back to the original. Let's go 800 and apply. Okay, so now I can confirm down here it's 800 by 530. So I need to crop the image. I resized it first to get close now I need to crop it. I need that second dimension, that height to be 400 and not 530. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna increase the zoom so I can work real closely with it. And I don't really want a thousand percent. That's a little hard to work with. Let's try 150%. Let's try 200%. All I'm doing is increasing the view. I'm not actually changing the image when I do that. And now what I want to do is I want to crop it. So we're going to crop the image. And Snagit's image cropping feature is better than any other I've seen. I've played with a number of them. It makes it really easy to adjust until you get the results you want. So remember, we've got the right width. And if you're ever not sure, just move your crop around, right? You can stop sort of halfway. and then drag it again. And notice as I'm dragging it, it gives me the dimensions, right? So as I go across, it becomes clear that 800 is the width dimension, right? So I wanna get that part done first real quick, make sure that I've got that down. And you really do want to be very precise. Just like you wouldn't plug a number on a bank rack, you definitely don't wanna plug a number here, right? So I've got my 800 width, I need to get my 400 height. Now I just have to click down and watch the dimension incrementing as I go till I get it to exactly 400. Now I've got it perfect. The question is, is this going to be do, you know, and a lot of times the simple question on something like this is, do I want the top 400 pixels or do I want the bottom 400, right? So, and you can click and drag this down and say, maybe I just wanna go in the middle, right? Once I've got the dimensions, I can click and move this around very easily. Okay, now it looks like I've fallen off the edge on the left there, so that's perfect. 
and I'll click crop. And what I'll often do is click save as, so I sort of preserve the original. And let's just call this previous zooms. The photo itself obviously have nothing to do with the zooms, but I title it, first of all, for SEO, right? And secondly, I want it to be able to, um, I want to make it clear to myself which, you know, what, where I'm using this image, right? So I title it accordingly. Um, I see that there's message in the chat. I'll be right there because we have two minutes left and I just want to make sure I finish this. So now I'm ready to go back here and select the image and we're going to upload a new file. And it gives you this dialog where I can click and drag it and it's right from here. Here's previous zooms. Notice after resizing it, the image is nice and small in size, the file size. That's important too because if you put huge image files in there, it's going to take longer to load on people's computers, especially if their internet connection is slow. So I drag it in. It instantly sizes it perfectly because I took the time to get it to the right dimensions. And I'll click save. And it's uploading. And boom. And now as long as I do each of these other two images exactly that way, everything will line up perfectly, right? One of the reasons I think I love this stuff is it is in the very similar ways to accounting and bookkeeping, it's very precise, right? And it's numbers oriented. And I can click save here to make sure that it's going to save what I just updated here, right? So you do this and you set your three sections. And then the other thing I can do, if I scroll down and look at my options here, again, there's the heading, and then I can set an action. So if I want to link to the recent zooms, I can say, go to a URL. Right, and really where I wanted to take them to on my site is uh, in NerdBuzz. So this NerdBuzz page actually tells you about NerdBuzz. That's my new kind of blog. So I really wanted to take them here. So I'm gonna put that URL in here, but one little trick. In case I ever change the domain, Somehow, which I know I'm eventually going to change it from new.nerdenterprises to just nerd enterprises. All you really need here is from the first forward slash. Kajabi knows that it's on your site. So if I get rid of all that and just do forward slash and the rest of the URL, that will take them there exactly where I need them to go. Over so what that does is that makes this clickable. So if I preview it and I can preview it here by clicking this dialog launcher. So now we can see the full rendering of what the page looks like. But now this is clickable so that when you, they click on it, it takes them over to Nerd Buzz, right? Now when you're building something like this, you have to always consider your workflow, right? Because you're, um, in my case, it's going to take them to a login screen if they're not logged in and if they don't already have an account. So I'm just going to make sure to put that information in here. Um, so let me go find the text. You will need to log in or create an account first. Don't worry, it's free. Right, and we have a little bit of formatting that we can do here to highlight that. And then when you click save, you'll see those, that kind of updating, right? And then once I've saved that, I can uh, go back to the preview. You're making me want to do a new website. <laughs> it's just, but yeah, that's what I'm, honestly, that's what I'm, that, that's what I want to hear, right? Because, so and again, the other thing I really want to show you because we're out of time and I want to make sure I get this in, let me just quickly check what's in the chat. It just okay. Looks like just fun. Tiffany having to go. Okay. Um, all right. So real quick, the other piece that's important on my site, uh, where's my actual site? There it is. Let's go home. You've got the idea how to build a page. It's really just it's it's really just cut and paste. They've given you the layout. All you have to do is choose. And I can say, you know what? Remove this section. I don't need this section in here. So up here, when I go to this this part of the dialog, here's the different sections. The features is this part. I click back. I can say, all right, here's a, a text and image section, which is this. Let's say I don't need this. First of all, by the way, you can rename it so you know exactly what 
refers to what, or I can simply delete it here. And th this little double line is a way to drag and reorder things on the page. And you can see it updating on the right as I do that. Again, it just, they made it so drop dead easy for you to make updates to this. But I really want to show you um, the critical part that goes back into the whole email part of things, right? Go away with that. So let me go into my page builder and I'm going to go to welcome. Here's the real kicker, and this goes back to capturing the emails, right? I'm taking you to this same page that's here, and I wanna show you a few things about this form. Okay, so what I did to create that in this page, I'll go to customize it, so now you're seeing the back end of this very page, right? Here's the get updates. Notice I renamed it, and so what I did was I told it, put in this form that I created called get updates. So let's go look at that form. We'll go back up here. That's going to be in marketing and forms. And here's get updates. Form itself couldn't be easier. You're going to just, it, it's going to have, I think, all of this by default anyway, first, last email. That's all I want. I don't want to hold people hostage and make it take forever for them to give me their email address, right? But here's the kicker. Whenever somebody opts in for this, you can add automations. Again, this is something that for, to do in WordPress would require a plugin that would probably cost more money, right? Here at $200 a month, all of this, everything you're seeing me do is included, okay? So the first thing I have is an automation. When the form is submitted, get updates, grant an offer. Nerd Buzz is my free blog, but it's set up like a product so I can organize it in terms of categories and lessons and things. Kajabi does have a regular old blog that you could use. I chose to do it this way. I went into the community and asked people what people thought, and a lot of people said, you know what, it's a great idea. So I set it up that way. So what happens is when somebody opts in, it automatically gives them that product, and it automatically emails them an email saying, hey, you know, here's a username and password to sign in on the Nerd Enterprises website you know, click here and you can update your password and blah, blah, blah. So again, this is how I'm getting people to come into my community. That's one of the ways. And then here, what it does is it automatically adds a tag to their name. I have a tag created called Seth's List. Okay, so that puts them on my main list, which is what where the emails go that I write every Saturday and send out every Sunday. So when I go to create an email campaign, and I go to click new email campaign and email broadcast. I'll call this one for Saturday, uh, 831.19. I'll rename that later once I know what the title is actually going to be. And over here, I have different segments I've created, one of which, of course, is called Seth's List. And that segment is based on people who are assigned that tag. And if somebody unsubscribes, I have another automation that automatically removes that tag. It wouldn't matter. The emails won't go to anybody who has unsubscribed, but I don't want that tag on them because I want the tag sets list to truly represent people who have and continue to be subscribed. So once I choose who I'm sending that email to, I hit save and continue. And I'll put the same thing in the subject. And I'm ready to go and personalize so I can address people by first name right? Make it more personable. And boom, I can enlarge this dialogue to a full screen view. But truth be told, I write these in Google Docs, and then I copy and paste them in. And if I have the image in, in, in the Google Doc, then I click this image, and I upload the image so that it will get embedded in the email. Same process as you just saw. You know, you just you get the image that you want to use, whether it's a screenshot or something from Pexels, and you drag and drop it here, and it will embed it in the email, right? So, Really, the moral of the story is I have everything I need in this one platform to run my whole business and build my community. And that's what I really wanted to impress upon everybody here today. Um, just a couple of other quick things. Um, I'll stop my sharing now. Again, I'm going to give you a partner link if you're interested in trying Kajabi. So make sure you get that from me. Um, Larry says Kajabi should be paying me for this. Trust me, if people sign up and use my affiliate link and sign up and stick with Kajabi, Kajabi is going to pay me for this. That's one of the reasons I like to partner with these companies when after I've fallen in love with their product, right? That's obviously the critically important key. So 
this morning I opted into an email list and I, this is going to, what I'm going about to share with you really is going to underscore something that's going to be important for you to think about when you're thinking in terms of, okay, what am I going to send emails about if I'm going to, you know, do what this crazy guy Seth says and start emailing people every week, right? So what I do is I analyze my own behavior, right? We talked about this at the beginning of the hour, you know, is looking at our own kind of behavior and thinking what triggers me, what triggers me probably will trigger somebody else, right? So this morning I opted into an email list. And the reason why, first, the title of the offer that came in, and it came in in the form of an email, was how to get 1,000 new email subscribers in 30 days. And I thought, well, I'd like to know how to get 1,000 new email <laughs> subscribers in 30 days. But the other kicker was that it came from a trusted source. The source of this was Sumo. Sumo is the parent company that owns AppSumo that a lot of you are familiar with. You, you, a lot of you use that to check out new apps and get suggestions. So it came from them and I trust them, uh, you know, as a source. So I opted in and here's the thing, because another thing you're thinking of is, well, if I have to give away some kind of a free giveaway, <coughs> um, what am I gonna do? I don't wanna create videos. I don't know how to create videos and it's too much work and I have other things to do, right? So th that's where this comes in, because what these guys did, which I thought was brilliant, I've never seen it done this way before, but now that I've seen it, I'm gonna do it, because brilliant. Um, the format of the giveaway. Um, it made me think of all of you for this reason, right? Because you might not have the time or the bandwidth to create a free video giveaway or write a whole ebook, <coughs> but any of you can do this. It was delivered in the form of a Google Doc folder containing a bunch of Google documents with the lessons. And the first lesson was something like read this first and it basically is a how to go through this course document. Right. And I thought this is brilliant and it's brilliant because now none of you has an excuse because all of you can do this. You're all an expert at something. So just prepare a series of lessons in a series of Google Docs in a folder and get a shared link for that whole folder. And that's what you email people once they've opted in for your list. Right. Then while you're getting people to opt in for your list to get your giveaway, you can get busy building the rest of your website in Kajabi. As you've just seen, Kajabi makes this ridiculously easy. And uh, so all you need to do is, is get to work right? Uh, you'll need some images. I just showed you how to do that with Pexels and Snagit. Uh, and this will come in handy. The images have to be uniform in size. And so that's why I wanted to make a point of showing you today how to not just resize, but also crop an image in Snagit. And then again, Pexels is awesome because it's free and it's easy to use, right? You just go in there, you do your searches and you find something you like and then resize and crop as needed to make sure you get the right dimensions for your images. And that's how I got my homepage done. That's, and all the other pages on my site was the exact process I showed you today. So that's the whole key is because why is somebody going to want to opt in to your email list? Because there's something you're offering them. A lot of us are resistant to opting in because we get inundated with so much crap. That's why all of you, when I mentioned email at the beginning of the hour, were like, what? Email, right? But the truth is email is the best way to communicate with somebody in this format, right? For this purpose, right? It's not how I communicate with clients, but it's the best way to communicate with people like yourselves who are interested in what I'm doing and what I have to offer, right? And so, so the key is you have to give somebody a really good reason. And the really good reason you're going to give them is that you have something of value that they want, right? To me, the idea of learning how to get a thousand new email subscribers in 30 days is valuable to me. And I know there's a good chance they're going to teach me stuff I already know. But even if I learn one little nugget, right? Whereas Lisa's not here with us, Lisa Voss. She likes when I give my nuggets. Um, that just sounded so bad. Um, but she, um, anyway, I, if I get one little valuable nugget out of those lessons, it didn't cost me anything. So they send me some emails. There's a very good chance if this stuff was of value to me, that something else they're sending was of value to me. And if it's not, as it turns out, then I'll just unsubscribe right? That's very easy to do. Every email required by law has the unsubscribe link. You've all seen it in my own emails that I send out. It's at the very bottom, small little blue link, unsubscribe. You click it and you're done and you're unsubscribed. And systems like Kajabi are built to handle that appropriately so that you will not get another email when you've clicked unsubscribe on my emails. And obviously that's important. There is absolutely no point in emailing somebody who doesn't want your emails. All you will do is annoy them and you will have a person speaking badly of you instead of speaking favorably of you out there on the internet. So the last thing you want to do is email somebody who does not want your emails. It's so important to just build a list of people who truly want what you have to offer. Keep offering value, write something valuable. If you can accomplish what has just been proven today that I've accomplished, at least in some cases, you'll have people saying, I, I look forward to getting your emails every week. And that 
that came from me realizing that I look forward to getting Chris Brogan's emails every week. And so I said, I want to, I want what he has. I want to do what he's doing. And so I got to work and started formatting my emails the way he does it, sending them when he sends them. And lo and behold, little by little, I learned, I studied his emails and boom, here we are. I've got a nice email list, a few thousand people on it. Very few people opt out each week, about 15 to 20 new people subscribe each week. So it's good. It's growing. And the process has a way of weeding out the people who aren't really interested and a way of keeping in the ones who are. And those are the ones I want to focus on. You know, I'll end with this comment that, you know, I, I see a lot of people talking about like your YouTube strategy, for example, and how you want, you know, 100,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel. And my answer is no, you don't. You don't want 100,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel. You know, Hector and I have had this conversation where we look at the stats of a particular video and it shows you how most people click off after three minutes. And Hector's comment to me one time was, so I want to only do videos for three minutes. And he was surprised at my answer because I said, no, I want to keep doing them for 10. And he's looking at me like, why would you want to do it for 10 when nobody's interested after three? And I said, because I, I'm more interested in the smaller number of people that stuck it out for the whole 10 minutes. Those are the people I want to connect with. The people who dropped off after three minutes are only marginally interested in what I'm sharing. The people who stuck it out for the whole 10 are my diehard fans that I want to know who they are. I want to connect with them. I want to talk to them. I want to find out what they need, how I can help them, and then I want to offer it to them at a price that provides incredible value to them, right? That, in a nutshell, is the marketing process, and this is why I think it's so important to build your community at your home, which is your website. It's not social media. Social media is not your home. It's somebody else's home. And they've invited you in to network with others who have responded to their invite, right? Your job is to go in there just like a networking event, meet people, exchange cards, or in the digital world, just exchange information, get in touch, get them interested in what you're doing, and then offer value. Always, always, always offer value. That's the main thing. That's how you hit the home run on this kind of stuff. Any questions? Larry says in the comments on Facebook, I'm a web dev artist. The thing is, I'm not. You know, what I'm hoping you got out of this was you don't have to be. Kajabi makes it really easy to do that. So. Seems like Dynalist would be a great place to start just outlining before you even get started. Definitely, without a doubt. And in fact, that's exactly what I did, Alexa. I laid it out because I said I need to keep this simple. And I, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Dynalist is exactly where I outlined it because I said, what are the major things, the major areas that I need to break down for people? I want to make sure that people, when they come to my site, understand what it is that I offer without overwhelming them. Because in the past, I know the way I've laid out my sites has been overwhelming in some cases. There's just so much, right? So I said, all right, really simply, and I broke it down into the three areas that you saw earlier on my page. I have live support and training, which is where I log in remotely with people and help them. I have courses, which is where people can sign up and take courses. And then I have what I call CFO and bookkeeping, which is where I provide accounting services and people can outsource their accounting function to us. And I didn't show you this, but when you click on that page, that breaks it down further. It's the exact same page layout and it breaks down CFO and bookkeeping into three areas. We have what we call compliance bookkeeping. We have bulletproof bookkeeping as a service and we have CFO consulting right? And so that's how I've got that page breaking out with the exact same structure and those three little icons, right? Where I've done it with the images. So, so again, yes, I went into Dynalist. I outlined exactly how I wanted to lay this out. And that gave me a clear sort of site map uh, that made it really easy for me to go ahead and start building this in Kajabi, you know, and a page, take your time with this. A page should take you several hours to build. It shouldn't be fast. It should be something that you've put a lot of time and care into and really taken time to make sure that that page gets the message out there that you're trying to get to that's going to sort of draw people in and get them interested. There has to be a call to action. You know, one thing, and I'll share my screen again real quick. Uh, one thing you might have noticed uh, as you were looking at these pages on my site is there is what I hope is a clear call to action, right? Which this is that page I was talking about, um, it, which is schedule a call. For consulting especially, I want people to schedule a call with me. When you click on this, it takes you over to my one sub, which used to be scheduled once, 30 minute discovery call, right? And you saw the process for how I created that button. Very, very easy to do, right? Uh, back over here, uh, when they click on courses, Again, pretty clear call to action. Here are the courses you can sign up for. Pick what you're interested and sign up, 
right? There's no schedule a call. Frankly, I don't necessarily, I mean, of course I would. If somebody had questions about the courses, I would be happy to get on with them and do it. But I don't necessarily want to encourage people to get on the phone with me uh, to ask questions about a course. You know, like I said, I'll do it if that's what's going to help somebody understand what they're looking for and whether or not it'll meet their needs. Um, and then finally, the CFO and bookkeeping takes you right over to this page. And notice I have them open up in new tabs. I imagine some people might find that annoying, but I think it's good because this way somebody doesn't lose their place. If they get over here and they're like, wait, this isn't what I want, they haven't lost their place. Of course, a lot of people know how to click back on their browser, but some don't, or some just don't think of it, right? So I leave it up there so that they don't sort of lose their place. I think that's important. Same call to action here on the home page, right? Schedule a call. It starts to become clear. I want to get these people on the phone. I want to talk to people. That's the best and most efficient way to find out what somebody needs and how I can provide it to them, right? And then the only question is if they see the value and can afford to pay the value, you know, for what I'm offering. And that is that. So I will see you all. Sorry I went over by like 20 minutes. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will get the recording up. And like I said, I have my partner link. I'll put that in the show notes. Um, along with any other information like Chris Brogan's site and some other things I mentioned. And uh, if you are looking for anything and can't find it, just reach out to me and I'll make sure you can find it. Good job. Thank you. <laughs>